one of us is suffering any place on this planet, then a part of all of us is. The only difference between all one and alone is just one L. A good example of that is watching my mother with my grandmother. My wonderful grandmother, who was almost 96 years old, was dying, and my mother was taking care of her. And she would go in there with a banana, and she would pull the uh, peel down, and she would mush the uh, banana up in her uh, hands or in her mouth, like a mother does to her baby, and she would feed it to her mother, and she would cradle her in her arms. And she would take her underwear, which when you get very old and you're uh, getting close to the end of your life, you kind of forget about your hygiene habits. She was always extremely clean, but toward the end of her life, she just lost interest in that. And my mother would take her clothes, her soiled clothes and underwear, and wash them and help her put them back on again. And she would hold her in her arms and put food into her mouth and massage her neck to make the food go down. And I looked at there, and my mother was uh, 68, I believe, at the time, and my grandmother was 95. And I looked at them and said, who is mother and who is child? Uh, which one is which? And wasn't it just an instant ago in time, if there is such a thing, wasn't it just that much time ago that it was reversed? That the one who is now the baby was the mother holding the other one and putting bananas into her mouth and cleaning her underwear and changing her diapers and all of that. And it really brought home the essence of we are all one. And time is just sort of our way of defining what happens in sequence in life. But it doesn't have any meaning. I mean, uh, there's really no time in the world. There's only just the world the way it is. And each of us must accept that if any one of us have any suffering going on, then all of us are a part of that. And that's our responsibility. See, you can't get this transformation that I'm talking about in one year or ten years. The wonderful Chinese proverb said that if you want to think a year ahead, sow a seed. If you want to think ten years ahead, plant a tree. And if you think a hundred years ahead or more, educate the people. Once we educate the people and raise a few generations of people who won't be soldiers and who won't kill and who do love and who do see all of us as one and who understand that a person in Japan who is unemployed as an auto worker is just as much of a human problem as a person in Detroit, even though our proximity dictates that we are more compassionate toward the person in Detroit, that's just because we can't think globally. We're only thinking locally. And that it's still any human being who is unemployed is a problem for all of us. And any child who is starving, because they're in Africa, a continent and an ocean away, doesn't mean it any less affects all of us. A lot of people operate under the assumption that I give my love to people who deserve it, and that's a mistake, isn't it? Everyone deserves it. Everyone. Gandhi said, hate the sin, love the sinner. And that's a very important line, very important philosophical approach to life. Hate the sin, love the sinner. The things that people do are things that we can help them to correct and to change and within ourselves and other people and so on. And we can teach them and help them to grow to not be destructive. But everybody deserves our love. And until we start thinking that way, we're going to always have dichotomies. We're going to always have you versus me, us versus them. And as long as there's that usness and meanness and you-ness, there will never be a all of us together. See, what we need to do is all go up in a spaceship and look down at the Earth and see this fragile little planet that we live on and that we are all one on this planet and that we must all recognize that instead of looking for all the things that separate us instead of building more weapons to destroy us we must begin looking for ways that we can all get along and as hokey as it sounds if we don't do it we won't survive it as a species or it'll be left to generations billions of years from now who can evolve past the holocaust that we'll create to learn the essential messages of all great religious leaders all great spiritual people all great philosophers that we are love, and that we are the essence of what makes this whole thing work is all within us. And the truth won't be revealed to any of us until we recognize that we're a part of that truth. We're all a part of it, and we're all one. <laughs>